Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on spinal cord injuries. Spinal cord injuries can be divided into open and closed injuries. For open injuries, it causes direct trauma to the spinal cord and nerve roots. Penetrating injuries may result in incomplete cord transection. Whereas for closed injuries, it accounts for most spinal injuries and are usually associated with fractures or dislocation of the vertebral column. Damage to the cord depends upon the extent of bony injury, and may result in primary damage, contusion, nerve fiber transection, hemorrhagic necrosis, secondary damage, extradural hematoma, infarction, infection, and edema. For complete transection of spinal cord, there is total loss of voluntary movement distal to the level of transection, this loss is irreversible. There is also loss of all sensation from those areas which depend on ascending pathways crossing the site of injury. Whereas for incomplete spinal cord injury, there are four main types, which are anterior cord syndrome, shown in picture A. Picture B shows central cord syndrome. Picture C shows posterior cord syndrome. And picture D shows brown sequard syndrome. The dark shaded areas show the region of the cord involved. First for anterior cord syndrome. It is associated with flexion or rotation injuries producing anterior dislocation or compression fracture of vertebral body with bone encroaching on the vertebral canal. There is loss of power below level of lesion, loss of pain and temperature below the lesion. In addition to direct damage, the anterior spinal artery may be compressed. The dorsal columns remain intact and proprioception is not affected. Second is central cord syndrome. This occurs in syringomyelia and centrally placed tumors. It initially involves decussating spinothalamic fibers, so that pain and temperature are lost below the lesion. Later the lateral corticospinal tract is involved, with the more centrally placed cervical tract supplying the arm being involved more than the peripheral tract supplying the legs. Classically there is flaccid weakness of the arms, but because the distal leg and sacral motor and sensory fibers are spared, perianal sensation and some leg movement and sensation are preserved. Proprioception and fine touch are preserved in the dorsal columns until late. Third type is the posterior cord syndrome. This is seen in hyperextension injuries with fractures of the posterior elements of the vertebrae. There is loss of proprioception with profound ataxia and unsteady faltering gait. Usually good power, and pain and temperature sensation below the lesion. Next is brown sequard syndrome, which is hemisection of the cord, involving either right or left side of the cord. It can be caused by stab injury, or damage to lateral mass of vertebra. There will be paralysis on affected side below lesion, due to the pyramidal tract. Loss of proprioception and fine discrimination, due to dorsal columns on affected side below lesion. Loss of pain and temperature on opposite side below lesion. It is normal on affected side because of decussation below level of hemisection. Therefore the uninjured side has good power but absent sensation to pinprick and temperature. And lastly, cauda equina syndrome, which is compression of lumbosacral nerve roots below the conus medullaris. Caused by bony compression or disc protrusion in lumbosacral area. Lower motor neuron lesion. Bowel and bladder dysfunction, together with leg numbness and weakness. That's all for this video. Thank you.